we just finished editing the one where you coughed on the mic in the middle of my inspirational speech. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. He, 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 he tried to take it out. I'm like, no, you leave that shit in because yes. fuck-ups are kind of what we do. Anyway. Um, is, I mean, isn't that the whole reason behind this is we all made fuck-ups in our life? Breakup There's a reason society. we call it breakup, right? And, and your parents call theirs Matthew. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. Good. I didn't. That came out of my mouth. <laughs> his face. His face is all tight. Oh shit. Okay. 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 Yo, it's the big black kid that crushes your whole block. Dow Jones, Dow Stone, genuine short shot, street smart, street heart. You never want none. The beat starts. Beat starts. And run them out front. I don't get down with bitches and the crooked day bitches that want to do some shit. Hello and welcome to Breakup Gaming Society, home of the world's least responsible board gaming group. I'm your host, Helta Skelta. To my left is Pan, as in Pan's Labyrinth, not Pan Pizza. And uh, to his left, HP. Hey, hey. And of course, my stalwart, John, aka He, She Who Thirsts. Welcome up, back, Holmes. What's up, everybody? How you doing? So I usually try to do something clever during these episodes. You and try. Yep. Yeah, true, and, and you know true. what? The, 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 being, the, the, being the key word there. The bits always look better on paper, but to, tonight I'm going to fade into the background. Um, th- these episodes are edited by an old friend of mine. Uh, they've been on the uh, uh, podcast before under the name Glix Fagor, the Executioner. And Glix Fagor has one of the best comedic senses and best senses of play I've ever seen in terms of sinking into a character and committing to it. So, apropos of nothing, one night I I realized I missed a call from from him. Yeah. And I pick it up and I hear... Let me just say in in layman's terms for the young kids today, nobody, you know, dot, dot, then clicks Fagar in meme style. Yeah, out of, out of the blue, yep. he just calls me and leaves me this on the voicemail, uh, apropos of nothing. And so then she turned the tables on me, and then I was in the corner, and she was talking, 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 just talking, 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 just talking, but saying, I don't like talking, right? I said, I don't like talking either, and she was talking, talking, and I was in the corner now, and she was talking, talking, talking at me, talking, talking, just talking, talking. And I said, I don't like to talk. And I said, well, why are you talking? I don't like to talk. Well, you're talking, but you know, I don't like to talk. And you keep talking at me, but I don't want to talk. And you keep talking at me. And I'm in the corner now, and you're talking, and I'm talking. So, no, I'm not talking. You're talking. No, you're talking. I'm talking. And talking, 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 talking. Drink of the week. Welcome back. Uh, after some badinage, I think you'd call it. Uh, th- uh, this is a Helta Skelta here. Wait, wait, do, wait, does anyone have a dictionary? I don't know what the fuck that means. Bod- uh, badinage, uh, uh, back and forth, uh, uh, roast. So wait, repartee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Verbal riffing. Verbal repartee. Ba- ba- yeah. So so basically, it's it's a fucking badinage, a little back and forth, a little riffing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. So um, so today we are going to talk about. I I believe this is the co- and by the way uh. The woman who designed the beautiful cards? Yeah. That's Glix Fager's wife. Brand, oh, no way. Uh, mm. Okay. Bra- Brandy okay. Alexander. Small world. Okay. Nice. Nice. She's a talented, and uh, she's the one who recommended that I try this. It's Law's Whiskey House Four Grain Straight Bourbon Whiskey. We are drinking batch 20. Uh, alcohol volume is 47.5%. That seems respectable. And, um, Jean, you and I have been into this a little earlier, but you know what yes. we'd like to do is let's just. Toast and talk for a sec. May you fight long and well. May you fight long long and well. well. I'm just going to get this out of the way right now, and y'all can gain safety. No, no, no. Let them them talk first. No, uh, gain safety. Now that you've had a chance to taste it, out of uh, a lot of the whiskeys that we've had, this is one of my least favorites. Why? Um, It's a lot of treble and spice with not that much depth. Um, the, 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 I, I'm, I'm not. It's like listen to a record that's all hi hat. I, Personally, I think it would be great for like a hot toddy or something like that. Yeah, you know, it's where it, it, it's not definitely not a good solo. It, yeah, it really isn't that great solo. And 
Um, I don't mind it. I was honestly. gonna say, yeah. It, it, is it bad? No. 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 It, no, I, it, it's, no. no the, the, let's talk. And let's talk about. It. I mean, this is not bad. This is not yeah. rot gut. It's, and I think you hate it a little bit more than we do, but it is high on the spice. I agree. There's not. There's not much sweet. There's not much maple. Um, not even much this? smoky. Yeah. Um, and y- you and I had our first one. What two hours ago? And all I'm getting is like almost Why, like. Are you counting? What the fuck? <laughs> The fuck? Yeah, I'll say that oh, there, there is no. Yeah, what? <laughs> no, no, but but basically, all I get. See how far he counts at the end of the night, right? Okay. No, yeah. all, no, all I get is burn and spice, front to finish, and yeah. I, I don't I don't get the deeper Agreed. mid and base notes. Yeah, there's, but there's... but that's me. But uh, um, uh, pan. Yeah. Um. So first of all, the smell is uh, not very pleasant. I will say, and I will keep that as uh, simple as I can. Um, the smell is not that grand, but other than that, uh, it is a little flat. I would like it to have a little more depth, but it does have a small sweetness. It's very small. It is there. Um, I actually quite enjoy this one. I actually do. Fair enough. HP, what, what are you feeling? So uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, I won't be as nice as Pan was. Kind of smells like a whorehouse. You know, you walk so, into you, it's it's you know that from it's experience, that experience. We're assuming because <laughs> he grew up in not one. yet, not oh, yet. Oh, yeah, but, true. But, but back at your mom's uh, house. Oh so, yeah, I remember. Okay, but now that so, you said it, it's you know it smells like perfume and disappointment. <laughs> oh, sh- <laughs> wow, a little bit, a wow. little bit. <laughs> now, yep. No, it, now it, that, it, yep. It, it, it smells like perfume and disappointment. Like, legitimately, it's. You think you're gonna get laid? You waste fucking two hundred dollars on it. <laughs> Erickson, how much was this? Um, I, I th- th- uh, this is a seven fifty mil. Are and we talking a, a, about the whore? No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Fair <laughs> question, how, how much, John. How much, was the, how much was the bottle? How much was the bottle? <laughs> um, this uh, I got not near that. Th- uh, this is a seven fifty, and I got it at Costco for about forty six dollars. And and I, and, and, and and John, That's one terrible. one thing I will tell you yeah. is that for almost the same price, I can almost get a fifth of Basil Hayden's, which is like yeah. a dream. And, but there, and there's either that or she could spit in your mouth. <laughs> well, um, there's some unequivocal sentiment, uh, John. Let's hear. Um, well, I I mean I agreed with you. It, it does have that. Uh, it's it's a lot of bite, um, but I find it easier to put down than some for some reason. It, it has a less of a uh, almost acid to your stomach kind of taste. Well, you know? I thought I was the only one because almost like uh, from the first time it, it like went down my throat, yeah. I could feel instant heartburn. Yeah, yeah, it, it, but it has less than that though because I know bourbons and whiskeys have a lot of that. This one's not killing me too much. No, actually, the, the I got more of that from this one than from any well, other whiskey hmm. we've had on the show I'll ever. I'll be honest, I did not drink hard last night. So I'm drinking more tonight, which does that does help. Neither right. So there we go. Yeah. Um, and and uh, all respects, I bought this because Brandy Alexander recommended it. But well, she's a mixologist, I, and uh, she and uh, this is actually the basis of her favorite Manhattan. I would definitely go. try it again mixed. I would like that. But, yeah. but but I'm See, saying yeah, but I'm saying straight. Is, there are other whiskeys I go to I, first, like twenty doubt. whiskeys. I do, yeah, I, agree. I do have one note. I like the bottle. The bottle the is it's a bottle beautiful is, bottle. It's a the bottle, bottle is fucking it looks, gorgeous. It looks like something that you would bring out of your wet bar, and you're just like here. In like in the prohibition drink. era. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it it's is got this super big classy. Laws whiskey house on the front. It it's seemed, like it it, it it the way it's it super simple. It around. It, yeah, it's, it's a good. super simple bottle. It's a well designed bottle. No. But unfortunately, I think that's the only nice thing we can say about it at this point. Yep. D- I mean, I don't mind it. Uh, d- yeah, so no, I, I I can't be mad at it. We're gonna drink but. it. Oh, oh yeah, we're gonna finish the fifth. Yeah. Don't oh, get yeah, me no, fucking it's, wrong. Yeah. It's, very, it's very weedy. Almost hit you in the face with that. Yep. It a, yep. a, a lot. So anyway, there you it's go. A grown um, up bowl of cereal. Th- that is the BSG first impressions of a uh, Laws Whiskey House Four Grain Straight Bourbon Whiskey. We're gonna be right back with the game of the week. Game of the Week. Hey, it's Helta Skelta with Pan, HP, and Jean, a.k.a. 
he, yeah. she. Yeah, who thirsts? Yeah, sorry, all, I was distracted the... by your. Hey, hey, welcome back. Hey, hey. everybody, welcome back. What's hey, up in Radio yeah. Land? It's like, um, wow, is this, is this, that was my moment of going, wait, is this a real podcast? Have we, have we sold out? Was that hey? Dude, right though? It actually was a little scary. It was a little scary. Yeah, I, yeah, I got into morning FM. Uh, that That's, looks like yeah. a terrible idea. Thank you. Um, so, so, so tonight we're going to play something new together. It's a, it's a, it's a really fun, fast moving gang with simple rule set that mostly based is mostly based on fucking your friends over and lying to them. It's called cockroach poker. And okay. actually this game is so ass simple. Check it out. We can actually cover the whole rule set during this segment. Okay. Object players attempt to pass on as many cards as possible to other players. Okay. This is done by passing a card face down to the player of choice. They then declare what it is. The player on the receiving end must decide to either A, accept the card and declare whether the passing player is bluffing, or okay. look at it and pass it on to another player. Yes, yes. If they choose to pass it, they must declare it as what it is, either as a new critter or the same as before. The player who misjudges the other ends up keeping the card face up in front of them. Gotcha. The first player to have four of the same critter type, those are the icons on the top, Passed onto them or run out of cards in their hand is the loser, and all the other players win. Okay. That's the game. That's simple. Wow, it, that's great. It reminds me of uh, bullshit or uh, the the uh, the coup. Uh, I haven't yes, got to play coup. coup. I want to play yeah. coup. Um, yeah. This is this is that light and lean, and uh, yeah. and uh, there are a few other like minor wrinkles, but that is the game. So what we're gonna do? Let's just fucking play this shit. Let's do it. Uh, so we've had a chance to play a few rounds, and I think work out the kinks. It's not an incredibly... No, oh, keep going. Um, uh, P- Pan is actually dealing up our next game because yep. it was so much fun. Yep. Yeah, and it's basically... What, ha- what... Wait. Pan lost, huh? Yes. Yep. 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 Because you got the fourth toad. Yep. I got the fourth toad. The yeah, toad welcome. screwed me over. And uh, it was weird because HP was in trouble early with a lot. Yep, I was. So were I you. Was. So but, were you. But I wasn't. No, actually, because I had, eight, I had he, one he of was everything. Not in trouble because he had like one or two of everything. Yeah. yeah. Actually, but, I think you. I think point. you were missing one. I think you didn't have yeah. stink bugs. But that did was not it. have the stink bug. But what well, what really bugged me is how fucking John, this <laughs> evil dark Eldar bitch, he looked yes. over and he had no, fucking nobody. one card. One. One yep. card the whole so, time. And I got bored. I want. I was like, you know what. Let's just let's get something now. I'm gonna, this, I, this is boring. I want to taste my own blood. Yeah, I, well, yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm saying uh, Cockroach Poker, great game. We're playing again. And uh, we're going to be back momentarily because HP is going to deliver the track of the week. Adios. Beep, 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 beep. Um, we interrupt this stupid podcast for a special breaking news alert because apparently Jean has a new word of the week. Yeah, uh, Jean, can you hear us? I can, I can. I'm coming in. Uh, you're coming in nice and clear. So uh, I've got a fun word for us. Um, I'm gonna say it. I almost want your reaction. Just titty nope. Um, That's the word. Titty nope. It's a real word. I'm not making this up. It's a real word. I, I'm go- I'm going to guess at the spelling. T i d d y n o p e. Uh, close. It's two T's instead of the D's. So it's titty nope. But um, all one word. Yeah. That- that's what happened to me on prom night. Yeah, no, I, I believe that. I uh, believe that. Uh, it's also a uh, pussy note. Yep, and uh, crickets. No oh, laughter. Oh, right. right. <laughs> um, titty note. So it is. Actually, give me a hint. What's the uh, et, um, etymology? Oh, is, it, is it German? What, oh, what's shit. what's the root? Hold on, I don't think I know that. Titty nope. That much. That's fucking obscure. You are, I was I about know. to say he's unprepared. I know. Well, he's unprepared. My only guess is it's a kind of animal. Okay. Any other guesses? Um, I honestly don't know. Okay. I have no clue. See, I feel like it's one of those words where there's not actually an English translation for it. No, no. It's it. It means something. It does. I wouldn't just pull out a word that. 
that has well, no, because no, the thing is, is like there, there's like in Japanese they have words for feelings. Nope, that, not that. Nothing like it that. Is okay. Direct. Okay. So okay. what it is is at the end, like let's say you're having some ramen soup and the noodles at the very end of the bowl, that's titty nope, or some rice left over in the end of a bowl. So it's so it's, it's small it's, leftover crumbs or yep. pieces. Yep. At the definition, end of the titty nope. I've got it right here. Wow, it's a, a wow. small quantity of anything left over, whether a few beans on a dinner plate or the dregs at the bottom of a cup. Yeah. And sentence later, sometimes I wonder if we could put our titty nopes to better use. Right? Isn't that great? Wow. That's, oh, that's, that's fantastic. That's actually See that? That super so fucking that interesting. Me. Yeah. This is another fun one. So apparently we're going to have two words tonight. Please. But, uh, so same thing. I'm going to say it. I want to get your uh, get your guys' reaction. Let's hear it. Niggly wiggly. Niggly wiggly. Well, hold on. This is a, this is it's a... not racist. It's not racist. <laughs> and, and apparently, it's it's not the same as willy nilly. No. Um. No uh, guesses. No no, no guesses. Uh, nothing. Uh, nothing. Al- although that has to come from the English Isles. Yeah, I would agree. With I have that. honestly, I have no idea on that. What's the meaning? It's the little piece of paper you get in a Hershey's kiss. Come what? on. Yep. Wow. Jesus. Yep. Okay. Wow. And, so that's and, interesting. And, and, and by the way, I, d- I didn't day. know this This was in my head, but uh, while I was boozing on the porch of my friend's house at Trinidad, yeah. um, his buddy showed up from the road while my landlord, technically, was still out. And when he showed up, I, I told him that we were uh, claiming rights of usufruct. 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 U S U F R U C T. Also, usufructory privilege. What does it mean? Um, it's an actual legal term that lets you claim usage of something as long as you don't seriously damage or degrade it. Wow. Um, so legal, basically, this right term. now. <laughs> this. Yeah. Uh, at one point, it's like, yeah, uh, I mean. I want to see how that holds up in a court of law. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet if you're a poor person, not very well. Well, yes. So I'm, I'm claiming usufructory privilege on the left wing of your mansion. Uh-uh. Yep. yep. I was going to say, do you have one for us at all? Um, let's, something stupid? let's not put Peter on the spot. Here. I mean, the only thing I could think of would be this huge word that confused my roommate the first time I said it, and he just looked at me like I was insane. Please do. Um... Like you're insane? Yes, like I was insane, because apparently to him I was speaking gibberish. Um, And that word was um, hydromagnetothermal dynamics, which is a uh, form of theoretical quantum physics. Yep, sounds like a science bitch word. Yeah, basically. (laughs) And he had no idea what I was saying. (laughs) Well, there you go. You have uh, four new words to include in your vocabulary, Um, so uh, do with that power what you will. Wiggly, niggly. Niggly nope. wiggly. Huh? Titty nope. Titty nope. Usufruct. And um, hydromagnetothermal dynamics. I'd like to thank all our incredibly talented reporters in the field for bringing us uh, not one but three words of the week. Track of the week. Hello, Helta Skelta here with uh, Pan from Pan's Labyrinth. Sup, sup, guys. Which, by the way, I, I still think is the best Guillermo del Toro movie. Dude, I, I don't that know. One. Crimson Peak's a close second, I'd I, say. I have at least. not seen, but, but also you totally know, worth it. He also supposedly shot a full-length Mountain of Madness that no one's ever seen. I absolutely <laughs> believe that. The shit I know about that man. But uh, <laughs> he he got into a, a fight with the studio about the rating. He wanted it unrated. Unrated. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which supposedly, of course, he has a complete Mountains of Madness in the can. It's what, wow. about the polar Lovecraft expedition? Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, wow. so uh, I think HP is yeah. has track, track of the week. Track what do we listen yeah, to? I'm excited. So uh, I'm I'm honestly more of a classic rock person. Like you know, I appreciate the older the older styles, but within that, I have a deep appreciation for the old '90s hip hop. You know, you get. NWA and Notorious B.I.G., Tupac, stuff like that. I love the older hip-hop. And so this song is actually a mashup I found, just popped up randomly, and uh, I love it is 
a combination of Tom Petty's Free Fallen okay. and Notorious B.I.G.'s Mo Money, Mo Problems. Okay. So I think I'll let it speak for itself. Very good. Here we Hit go. Hit it. I love a good break and a good sample. Yeah. That was fucking hot. Yeah, no, Dude, I, I love this. I'm pretty critical of mixes because you can get it wrong. You can get it... So, so easily. I've, I've heard so many bad ones. Yeah. It this can go good. down. No, I, this is good. I yeah. like but how it's a the, good spin. You know, the the, yeah. the uh, Netflix show, The Get Down, right? Yeah. I, I have it. I'll put it on my list, though. It's good. Is Very it? good. All right. Very well done. Sometimes it's really corny, but it really does tell yeah. the uh, story of hip hop in the Bronx passionately. Yeah. And basically, the, the get down, what I liked about uh, the way they plundered classic rock, they only wanted the three seconds that made the hook kick. Yes, and they just loop it, right? Well, n- not loop it, they had it on two turntables. Okay. And the first Bronx DJs would have like one, like the get down, queued yeah. up here. You hit the fader to the other record. Yeah. Let that break play. Yeah, okay. And then while that was playing, you cue the other record and you turn the hottest three seconds of the song into like a seven minute dance track. And that's very much what that was. I love that. You know, it was, I mean, obviously a little bit more of a mix, but I love it. And it's, it's one of those like. It's, you know, it seems a lot, especially a lot in the 90s hip-hop, it was it was very much, it was hype. You know, it was get the party started, let's fucking go, let's do this shit. Which, which by the way, is what hip-hop has always been. Has always yes. been, has always I, been. I always say, it was, it was but, like, that's not real music, where it's like, these, this was a fucking party. But uh, the, reason I lo- the reason I love this so much is because, you know, when you mix Tom Petty in there, it's like, you know, it's still got that kind of hype, but at the same time, there's this super chill just guitar riff in the background that, yeah. you know, keeps I you at this nice, that. nice steady level. And they and they use yeah. it on, on the breakdown. Um, there is one thing I love about this, and it's the one reason I haven't really heard, and I think this might just be a personal thing with me, but I like how you can take two different genres and mix them together into something great. Because yeah. then you have yeah. a middle ground. Yeah. That you can actually like get two people that like different music enjoying the same thing. That's a great point. It's it's a great way to bring people together. And, and it reminds me of an interview I, I read with uh, D- DJ Shadow. Okay. Yeah. And uh, his uh, album uh, Introducing blew up, and people was like, "How'd you do that?" He did it on a fucking four track, <laughs> and he just r- rated vinyl. Okay. Damn. Damn. Wow. I mean, so and, and they said and they, and, he, and they asked him, "What's your favorite music besides hip hop?" He goes, "You don't get it. Hip hop's the music you play when you want to hear all your favorite music." I really love that. Nice. I feel like very nice. Yeah. I feel like EDM has become that as well. I mean, EDM is definitely uh, like over the years because I mean you've got, you've got dubstep, all that kind of stuff. But then you start getting in like electro swing and stuff like that. And yeah, but if yeah. you go back like so many genres, um, and this is fun because in the uh, like late seventies, early eighties, yeah, there's this really interesting uh, cross pollination between the new wave punk scene and hip hop. Okay, who recorded the first big rap single? Blondie, yep. Rapture. Yep. Yeah. Blondie. Blondie, yeah, Blondie actually, fun fact, was the first rap song to hit the top twenty. And, and, and actually, crazy. I think it hit. No, I think it hit number one, didn't it? Might have. I think. I'd... And she didn't do it to like, you know, she was from New York City, and those punk rockers loved hip hop. I also read like interviews with uh, Grandmaster Flash. You know who their idols were? <laughs> they loved Kraftwerk. Oh shit! Yeah. And uh, have you ever heard uh, um, uh, World Destruction? 
Mm-mm. by Time Zone. No. It was a collab between Johnny Rotten and the Sex Pistols at Africa Bombada. Ooh. Dope. That wasn't, yeah, that's got to go on the list. Um, and... Which, by the way, I still listen to it because the beat to this day is still so fucking hard. It's hard. <laughs> and also, um, during the chorus, has the sexiest right hand um, melody I've ever heard. Nice. So can we say then that art and music, it's, it's very much a collaborative it, it very much Absolutely. is. Well, well, I mean, it should. Let's say it should be. And it also, should be. Every form of art has a muse. And, and one of the reasons D, uh, DMC, um, they said like when, we, when we'd rap and cue records to rap, mm-hmm. we had classic rock records. Yeah. R- well, Rizza loves Pink Floyd. Um, well, so that's the oh, thing I love is uh, Pink Floyd yeah. and Nirvana. Aerosmith. Yeah. Steven right. Tyler fucking hated Walk This Way. Until he recorded it with Run DMC and turned it into a hip hop track. Huh. And also, almost within the same year, License to Ill breaks. Which, by the way, is produced by Rick Rubin, one of the best producers ever. Have you ever seen like the list of records he's produced? I haven't. All right. Uh, so I'm going to end this segment. He, 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 pro- he, he, he produced right. License to Ill for the Beastie Boys So and Slayer's Rain and Blood in the same year. Every time you hear also, take a drink. Oh. And you're gonna get fucked. And that was track of the week. We'll be back for the outro. Fun extra facts. You wanna hit the kill it? Have you ever heard Airlanes by uh, ever heard Airlanes by Gary Newman? I love Gary Newman. <laughs> yeah. So, supposedly there was a drum break in that that the early Bronx DJs like DST loved so much they put it in. Also, um Yeah, I yep. Yeah. There's a song you need to welcome hear. Welcome to the um, Welcome to the Ramblings by, of Helter Skelter. No, by <laughs> by uh, Houdini. One of the greatest old school acts. Yeah. But a uh, public enemy and run DMC loved them because they had a great live show. It was uh, Ecstasy, Jalil, and okay. they're old school guys. But they have a song called Magic's Wand. Okay. It was a, they, they were just basically kissing a radio DJ's ass because he, he was the one and guy. And did it the, turn out like a good song? It's smoking. And I look, I, I did some reading about it. You know, I like collaboration. Because you, know, you know who produced it? Who? Thomas Dolby. Who produced what? Magic Swan for what, what else? Houdini. Did he produce anything else? Thomas Dolby was a British synth pop guy. Yeah, you know, Video Killed the Radio Star. He was a that man. That makes sense. She blinded me with science. That makes a lot of sense. Also, also, I can confirm, Blondie's Rapture was indeed one of the first rap songs to hit number one on the U.S. Hot 100 or the Billboard Hot 100. All right, let's and, get back and, to the and game. You had, and you had big sellers because Nate. Uh, Nate. Um, Grant, yeah, no, we uh, we we got we got to cut this man. Yeah, we're we're rambling right now. So uh, it's been a delightful night. This is a uh, Helta Skelta, and for our outro, I'm going to cede the mic to HP, who has a story to tell us. Go ahead, sir. So uh, I accidentally blew up a bird. Let me, let me, let me tell you how. So, uh, at work, I, fucking freak snowstorm out here. And, uh, I found this, uh, this poor little bird who had, uh, I assumed he hit the building, froze to death sometime during the night. And I decided I was going to try and, you know, be respectful and try and preserve his body. Sorry, is, when did this happen? Place us in time, please. Uh, so I found the bird about a week ago. Okay. And so, uh, I was like, fuck it, on my way home, I, I ran by a craft store, got some resin, that kind of stuff, uh, ended up not having enough, so... We can pickle that. <laughs> yeah. No, that, poor, poor honestly, guy. you texted me, and that's, mm-hmm. that was the question, do you know anybody who, what, what is the term? <laughs> taxidermy. Uh, no, not uh... taxidermy, the, the pickle, more of the, like, in the jar. A wet specimen? Wet specimen. Wet yeah. Specimen. And I was like... And oh, so I was, right. you know, I was trying to... Which would have been, would have been cool. Would have been probably cool. might have worked out better. Probably, but uh, I was a little excited. But I ended up not having enough resin, so poor guy sat for a week, half encased in resin, um, on my coffee table in the middle of our blindly. apartment. Yep, in the middle of the apartment. in the middle of the fucking apartment. Uh, I finally got resin, and uh, what kind of bird do you know? Uh, it, was it was a goldfinch, a tiny little finch. Yeah. That's nice because. All I see around here are crows and fucking magpies. Basically. Dude, I love crows. But, uh... They're pretty... So, I was sitting there, and I was like, I should try and uh, hurry this up a little bit. So, I was like, fuck it, I'll try and cure the resin in the microwave. 
<laughs> About five seconds later, I hear a pop, so I open the door, and I'm like, oh, the candle wax got in the resin somehow. I was like, oh, the candle wax melted. Pulled it out, and I was like, oh, wait, that's coming out of his beak. That's blood. So yep. I stopped right there, and, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how I almost blew up a dead bird. Actually, <laughs> um, this is actually, uh, I thought, sad and, and beautiful. So, uh, as you know, I've been on living in hotels and motels yep. for the last six weeks, yep. everywhere from Colorado Springs down to Taos. It's been hard to introduce you to people. So uh, uh, My homeless friend, I don't know what to say. So one night, I'm in Alamosa at the fucking most disgusting hotel I've ever been at. It's a roadway in. Okay. There's a couch in the room, which is so fucking filthy. I actually hold my breath when I walk by it, but nonetheless, I make the best of it, and uh, I do some meditation, and then when the heat subsides, I take a walk down the main strip. There's a part where they're doing construction, so you know when they have like the cement barricades and it's really tight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was feeling like, enlightened from my meditation yeah. and dusk is falling and then I look across the street I see this big big black tom Jeez. trying to trying to gauge traffic Dang. and there are no gaps I mean it's just like truck 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 the other side and, uh, and at one point he just breaks into a sprint and he, it's like one of those times like even before you can think the thought it's like oh my god he's gonna yeah. he, get, he makes it to the right lane and then you know that sound the uh, mm-hmm. um, the front right and the rear right tire catch up square, mm. ka-tunk, ka-tunk. Man. Yeah. but you know what happened? Just spun him around, still on his feet. <laughs> he, around he goes, "What the fuck?" and then sprints off into the dark. Whoa. <laughs> I love that, dude. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't, cause you know what? After that adrenaline wears off, he's gonna die of internal bleeding. Probably. 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 But uh, it's so true, though. When but you... at least it was helpful. It um, seems like whenever you okay. see, when you, you reach moments of enlightenment, the universe goes, really? And it kind of smacks you in the face a little bit. And you know what I thought of? Yeah. That was Buddha's body in the garden. In which garden? Like when he received enlightenment? Um, far before, when he was just a rich kid. Yes, okay. Uh, Gautama Buddha. Yes, yes. Not like the mythical one, yeah. but the guy actually died of old age, still found in temples. Yes. As the legend goes, he was like the son of a very wealthy man, a lavish life, but one day he sees the body of a dead man in the garden. He's like, and that was the big, what's it all about? Gotcha, that start, was that. And he starts wow. his exploration of life and death. So what you're saying is, in maybe ten years, you might have some wisdom. God, I hope so. <laughs> Me too. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is, like, I was just like, I was for a minute, like, you know, and this is what mm-hmm. bugs me about fucking wonder, upper, w- upper middle class white people who adopts all this Eastern shit. So basically, at least three of us in this room right now. Well, I honestly wonder. No, nobody here is upper middle class. I'm going to look it up. I wonder if there's a word for that. The word not for upper middle class, but for when you reach a moment of peace or enlightenment and then the universe smacks you in the face i bet there's a word for that well it's, it's called your next lesson yeah reality i was about it's to say karma, karma. Oh, growth the cycle continuing and, and, the, and the whole thing was it was you know tim reminded me that they were deeper and, exactly. and he fumbled at first like you know, the whole myth of him going to the bodhi tree and uh and he sits under the Bodhi tree. And, and he kind of meets a middle ground between his aestheticism and his yep. lavishness. And he, you know, he meditates, and he doesn't eat or leave the Bodhi tree, and he realizes, like, oh, that was a little bit too much. Yep, yep. And he, uh, just, he ate some rice, and then he was... It was good. You know, and, and, you know, and the whole thing is like... Uh, I, I've been uh, using yoga nidra techniques. Uh, yeah, which is awesome. Like, I, I see you, I like, walked in, I saw your book right there, you know? And, and the whole thing is, like, why I would never, like, start? Because, like, you know how, like, you won't start on it because it's not perfect? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, but, yeah. But what, what I figured out is, like, if you do anything, yeah, anything, that gets you to settle down for ten minutes, you're a step ahead of yesterday. I, okay, I like that. And, uh, I agree with that. And basically, I didn't realize what yoga nidra was. 
Are we are we cut? I was about to say, do you, are you still recording or? Yes. Oh fuck! Whoops. <laughs>